Good morning. Welcome to another episode of the Leader Podcast. And very empty coffee cups. Yeah. Happy Monday. Let's cheers to the air in these cups. Yeah, I'm desperate. This is literally my last drink of this. Ooh, there it goes. Mine too. I don't know what, what you know. Was right, I was just backwash. So. <laughs> Hey, uh, let's give some stuff yeah. away. How does that feel? Hey, sweet. No, so if you watched away. last, you know, last week's episode or whatever, right. we put uh, a bunch of your names on the screen. These were people who subscribed to our podcast and told us. You know, right. there are more, right. but I asked for like a screenshot. Yeah, we want to. We want to prove. So yeah. trust but verify. <laughs> so um, we're giving away what I think is the most underrated shirt we've ever made. Okay. Like. We've made some okay ones, but this one, like the a person like the brand, like the actual like yeah. very like heavy duty shirt. Yeah, it's white with just a hex C, very minimal. Like this, you know, this is a lot going on here. I like just a hex C. <laughs> I made this one, not this one. Yeah, yeah. There you go. So I will say I know this is your favorite shirt because I think you wear it two out of every seven days of the week. Well, because I can get away with wearing it on a Sunday and it doesn't have a collar, but it looks like I'm yeah. On it, brand. In brand. So, yeah, I love it. Um, I didn't wear it on stage yesterday, though, by the way. I preached uh, yesterday. Yeah. We're talking in the future in the past. Yeah, so I got it. I had yeah. to wear a collared yeah. shirt. That's what? in the rules. Did you know that? They you have me? to wear a collared shirt? Yeah. I think... Um, well, let's get you a couple of brand Leanne, ones. if you listen to this, I think this is Clay's fault. <laughs> so one week, he preached in a t-shirt, and I was like, ooh, bold. Love yeah. it. Yeah. And then it's the next vibe. time I talked to Craig, he's like, well, we got some dress code stuff and a handbook, and so I'll send it your way. So there you go. Collared shirts. Thanks for nothing, Clay. Yeah. All right. Well, we're going to find you some collared shirts. If it wasn't shirts. him, it was going to be me. We're going to brand you specific, because you're on big stage more than I am, for sure. Yeah. We're well, going to brand you some collared shirts. Ah. No, we have to. Why don't we then get I, one that's a I big... Then just look like a Gen X or playing giant, golf. Let's get a giant hex C on the mm. whole thing, and then just button it up the middle. Sweet. Or a zipper. Let's get you a zipper shirt. You know what I would wear is like a baseball style yeah. one with yeah. The, in the corner. But it wouldn't have the a... The big one, like you're talking about? It still wouldn't have a collar, no though. Things. A baseball, baseball jerseys don't have collars, do they? But they have buttons, so I think they give you the illusion. Counts. They counts. They give it counts. Yeah, yeah. I just, I'm not a golfer, and I'm not gonna wear golf shirts. I that's fair. I think that's gonna be me one day. That's fair. We'll figure anyway, it out. Yeah, we'll brand let's you. Give, some, we'll brand you somehow. Shout outs. Let's give let's something give away. Let's give this shirt away too. So thank you so much for subscribing, everybody. Hey, and if you have subscribed but your name's not in here, just drop it in the group. Me. Yeah. Let us know. Hundred percent. Go. Bonk. Winner is Lacey Wheat. There you go, Lacey. This will be in the leader workroom for you. Make sure you pick it up. This coming Sunday. God bless and Godspeed. But beyond shout outs, we're in this sort of like four week little series on shepherding. Yeah. Which is a very Jesus y sounding word. Don't, don't you have a, I thought you had a leader shout out for Travis Nash. Oh! Back, yeah. back, back. Yeah, back, 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 back. Here we back, go. Back. Travis Nash. Shout out. This was a great idea, by Travis, the way. Travis, good job. So I co led with Travis a few weeks back. And we had a lot of scripture to go through. It was the Joseph week. Yeah. It was like all of Genesis 37, mm -hmm. half of Genesis 38. You're welcome. And we didn't even like wrap the story. Like he went to prison and then that was like the end of it. Bye. And he, <laughs> Travis Sorry, actually that's all at, me. Travis actually looked at me and was like, I'm assuming we're going to finish the rest of this next week. I was like, no, this is it. <laughs> He's like, oh, well, then to finish the story, blah, blah. But so what he did it in that group, which I thought was really like, I would, I, uh, I wouldn't have probably thought of this. Um, so I was like, oh, that's really creative. Yeah. Um, he had everyone get a Bible or uh, their phone, however they're going to listen, or not listen, but read the, the passage. And then he pulled up version on his phone, and he played it, just played the audio of the story. Oh, nice. And I actually like was like, you know, at first I was like, I don't know how this is going to go. But then by the end of it, I was like, that was really like a good way to read scripture in a way that's just different. Yeah. It's a different way to kind of do it. So yeah. if you're ever looking for ways to mix it up, like the reading of the passages, you know, maybe you do like volunteers, maybe everyone reads a verse, you go around in a circle, whatever, like yeah. another kind of hack there. Yeah. Is the and it's a super Bible great plan. way to be sensitive to kids who don't like to read. Yeah. Right? I, just listen. You don't have to. We'll have, so we'll have really some good. guy from Britain read it to us. Yeah. Really, really yeah. good hack. So I love it. I really good liked job, it. Good job, Travis. Good job, Travis. Love it. All right. Now let's okay. talk about shepherding. So yeah. last week we talked about like the importance of the role. Um, like attendance role, which if you think about it, that's like leading a small group. But all of that is like outside of the actual group time. Right. 
So today I wanted to really like narrow in on like leading a particular group. Yeah. Connect group or grow group. What do you do when you're in the room? Yeah. And how can you lean into pastoral care? Because if you think about it, the lesson sometimes feels like it may fly in the face of actual like shepherding or like pastoral care moments. Right. What's more important? Because you got to get through those questions. The lesson. Yeah. The lesson or the people that you're trying to teach the lesson to. Correct. And so how can we do both of those? What's the like sort of like, how do we lean in and, and find the, the nuance of that? Right. And, you know, shepherd people well during that actual 45-ish minutes of connect group time. Yeah, so, I love it. Yeah, I mean, a good way to think about that, honestly, y'all, is the the lesson, the material is really designed to help you connect with the people. It's not designed to give them more information it's designed to dig into their heart. Mm. And a good way to do that is to make sure that there's plenty of conversation happening, that you're not teaching, you're more facilitating uh, open conversation, yeah. right? And then you're gleaning teachable moments as kids are talking. So one hack is assess yourself. If you're talking more than 50% of the time, you're talking too much, mm. right? We want students to be talking at least half the time, asking questions, giving prayer requests. A lot of students will throw in answers to questions other students have. And then your job is to glean that teachable moment in that conversation and bring it to a good point. In a really good way. I've sat in on a few groups here recently. And, you know, like I was telling you about Travis and like some of those guys are leading, like they're doing a good job asking questions. I'll be real, like, those students sometimes their conversation like they're they're tough like they're not really willing yeah. to give you much. So right. I can hear you maybe on the other side of this thinking like yeah but I'm trying but no one's answering. Right. So then I sort of resort to or default into like just teaching a lot. Right. And like I feel your pain. Yeah. <laughs> and so a, a like a phrase that I think is good to add to your repertoire is what else? Yeah. Have a, a kid That's someone great. ask or answers a question mm-hmm. and then be like, all right, what else? And so that's going to help. That's going to kind of force you to ask open-ended questions. So yeah. hopefully we're writing open-ended questions. I'm trying to. But if you ask like, what does verse 37 say? Like there's only one answer to that. Right. And so you got to try and like drum up a way to ask a question. And I like to do, you know, you can do like a, what does verse 37 say? But then be like, okay, how does that play out practically? Yeah. And so what else? Yeah, you'll notice a lot of our questions are kind of like, how would you questions? So Peter walked on water. How would you feel if you started sinking in the ocean knowing that Jesus was standing right there? What do you think was going through Peter's mind when he heard the rooster crow the third time? What it like... Wait, put, that happened during the water walk? Uh, no, I just I just merged it. That's the DSV, the mm. Darren Sutton version. Uh, so merging, no, not merging, uh, asking students questions that help them put themselves in the moment yeah. or access something deeper than a head knowledge is really important. Yeah. I also think uh, another leader, shout out, Robin McIntyre uh, and Don Underhill are great at this. They... They will use the guide questions if they need to, but a lot of times they'll just read and have read the the passage we're in mm-hmm. and have students ask their own questions mm. and then teach from there. Now you got to feel comfortable kind of slinging from the hip with that. Yeah. But I think most of our leaders have been leading long enough now that they do. They're aware enough of scripture and yeah. kind of the direction of our studies and whatnot that they can do that. But Robin and Don do a really good job of letting students guide the conversation yeah. uh, and ask questions that are really the questions they want to ask. We write these questions thinking that they will open conversation for you. They're not always the direction the student needs to go. Yeah, right? they may not be one size fits all. Correct. That's why you need to know the individuality of your group and your students. Yeah. What some else? of some of you might say, my kids are talking too much. Yeah. Like I can't get a word in edgewise and I have a really hard time corralling them back. So what are some tips that you can use to either get kids to talk more or to get kids to talk less? One thing is a pass around. That's a, you know, a super old school trick. But you don't talk unless you have the talking stick, whatever that is for you. It can yeah. be a hot potato. It can be a piece of candy. A it can be, a, can be a toilet mug. No one talks unless they have that, right? If you have a student who's going wildly off topic 
and you don't feel like you should chase that rabbit because it is okay to go off topic and chase rabbits occasionally. Yeah. If they're going wildly off topic, it is okay to say, hey, you know what? Let's save that for the end. You and I can touch base on that in the lobby after we're done. Yeah. And just redirect it right back. Yeah. Another thing is to find a kid who's really good at talking, pull them aside after a Sunday morning and say, hey, Nick, you know, you're really good at guiding discussion. Could you help us with the questions next week? Would you be willing to kind of co-lead with us yeah. and think through some questions that you would ask the group and see if they talk? Yeah. yeah. They would, the, the discussion would be better if a student leads it. Yeah, 100%. Uh, the last one is leave enough like space to have conversation. Yeah. Don't just, like, like, so give yourself 10 minutes at the end to pray yeah. and do prayer requests. Find a way to like keep track of those, you know, in the groups I've been in, like I've seen, you know, like Travis, I saw you bust out like a prayer journal. So everybody has a journal in their basket to use. And one of the things that does Nick is it, it, if you're going to, you know, welcome wanted known Mm -hmm. doing prayer requests every week helps you really learn where kids are spiritually. Yeah. And it gives you an automatic end to a conversation the next week. So Tell me, did your dog die? Yeah. Did your dog die after he ate all the grapes? Tell me about that, Nick. Nope. Right? My bank account did. (laughs) He's still alive. But throwing out prayer requests every week, you have to intentionally make time for that. We confess to you, we don't give you enough time to do a thorough group setting. We just don't. Our church does not have the capacity to give everybody 90 minutes. Yeah. Yeah. So you have to make time for that. You have to say, Hey, I'm going to go this far. And at this point we're going to cut it off. Or you have to say, Hey, I'm going to start every conversation with prayer requests or, you know, um, highs and lows or whatever you're going to do to get casual conversation, but really good meaty information on a student Figure out where you're putting that in and don't let that go. Do it every week or as often as you can. Which, bonus hack, and I don't, you know, I'm not the guy trying to tell you to, like, read scripture less. However, like, if students went on Wednesday night, they heard the the story and they were taught a lesson from scripture already, and um, they can, you know, if you don't have kids that are able to get there, like, Maybe like stack hands and be like, hey, let's all watch the video before we get in here. Love that. So that the prep is done ahead of time. Because a lot a lot of the groups I've been in this summer, uh, a big chunk of the early section of that group is taken up with rehashing through that the scripture story. passage. Yeah. And yep. if everyone can come in with the baseline of it and we summarize it as opposed to like read every single verse, um, then that might help buy back some of the time that you may feel strapped for yeah. some of that pastor. And, and, and if you have a group me, throw that stuff in the group me. Throw a link to the video. Throw a, hey, read this passage before you come. It's okay to give them some prep work. You know, in that connect phase of their spiritual walk, they should be taking some next steps into developing their own faith. So that's a really and, good moment. And just because some aren't doing it, like what we often try to distill our <clears throat> meeting times down to is getting everyone included. And mm-hmm. I'm not saying leave anyone behind, but if there's a kid that's like uninterested, like mm-hmm. reading the scripture all together is not going to make him more interested. It right. just included him, but you got kids who's already heard it all. And so it's a really big, like, time of repeat for them right and they may have more like to dig into the heart stuff yeah that they're not getting a and time sometimes to do. that'll wet the whistle of the kid who may be disinterested to to ask more questions because they didn't get a thorough enough yeah conversation and then let the, the kid who heard it reteach yeah. it yeah there you go you guys are pros thank uh, you for all you do story time story time uh so i have a, a former student who became a student pastor his name's tommy Tommy, uh, Tommy called me, maybe this is probably his first couple of years in student ministry. Okay. And he said, I now understand why you don't do lock-ins. <laughs> <laughs> lock-ins are the bane of a student pastor's existence. It doesn't matter how old or young you get. So Tommy was a pretty early in his career youth pastor. He decided to do a lock-in. Um, he decided to play a game called underground church. Okay. Underground church at its base level is a little bit of a hide and seek in the dark kind of thing. There's yeah. some spiritual connotation to it. It's super fun. You got people trying to catch Christians and throw them in jail. And, you know, it's got... It's, so fun. It's got so fun. Well, for some it is. Anyway, uh, so Tommy has all the lights off in his church. He's got a lot of guests there for the first time. Yeah. They're running around playing underground church, and they just hear this horrendous crash 
All the lights come on and their gigantic glass entry table with all the things on it is smashed into a million pieces. Oh no. And Joanne, who is a new student, has a <laughs> has a little Harry Potter Uh-oh. right there, blood gushing everywhere, having to call the dad who's not a believer to come up and take his daughter to the ER. Oh, and no. yeah. Uh, moral of the story, Joanne is now married to another former student, Cody, who's also a youth pastor. So maybe lock-ins are what create youth pastors. I don't know. Yeah. Uh, they're not what creates this youth pastor. I am an anti-lock-in guy. Same. Because somebody always comes out with a bleeder. Oof. Yeah. So story time. <laughs> you want to crash land this yeah, thing? Yeah, let's <laughs> crash land on that one. Yeah, let's break your entry table. Love you guys.